kind of a clip and save thing. I'll just warn you from the outset. Uh, it's a little bit of a, it's not a public service announcement. I sort of feel like it is a trying to be a little bit of a public service. Um, this is a list I used to be able to keep in my head. But then today we got another name to add to the list, and I realized when I tried to rattle off the list in my head of all the names, including the new guy, I was humbled. I realized that actually this list has gotten way too long to casually keep track of it anymore. We need to start keeping a public count of this stuff. Let's see if you agree. Let's start with the most obvious one. The Russian ambassador to the United States. There's nothing wrong with members of a presidential campaign or even a presidential transition meeting with a foreign ambassador, but the Russian ambassador with this particular campaign, he did it a lot. Russian ambassador met several times with Jeff Sessions when he was a top campaign official, also with Jared Kushner during the campaign, also with Jared Kushner and Mike Flynn during the transition. That was the meeting where intelligence intercepts afterward reportedly overheard the ambassador explaining how Jared Kushner had inquired about setting up a secret communications channel between the Trump transition and the Kremlin. So that's the first one, that's the ambassador. Then there was also the head of a Kremlin controlled bank a graduate of what's basically Russia's spy school. Um, that banker who graduated from spy school also met with Jared Kushner during the transition. Then there was the Russian-born ex-con who was convicted of a $40 million mafia-connected pump-and-dump stock scheme. Uh, him and also the Russian real estate mogul and former member of parliament he was working with, they were all quietly working during the campaign with the Trump organization to try to get a Trump tower built in Moscow. Candidate Trump signed a letter of intent to pursue that project in Moscow, even as he insisted publicly that he had no interests and no deals with Russia. So then there was the, the, the ambassador, the banker, the ex-con guy, the real estate guy. Uh, then there was the longtime employee of Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort, who was a Russian military intelligence veteran. Uh, he was in contact all the time during the campaign with Manafort, and he's the one who flew to New York to deliver messages to Manafort from a Russian oligarch who's close to Vladimir Putin. Then recently we learned about the official from the Bank of Russia. He's been described by law enforcement as a godfather in the Russian mafia. He contacted top Trump campaign officials to try to set up a meeting with Donald Trump at an NRA conference during the campaign last year. He did not get that meeting with Donald Trump Sr., but he did get dinner with Donald Trump Jr. Uh, then, of course, in June of last year, there was the Kremlin-connected Russian lawyer who met with Don Jr. and Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort at Trump Tower. There was also a Russian-born lobbyist um, who was once a KGB counterintelligence operative who was at that meeting. And also another Russian dude who was at the center of a congressional investigation into Russian money laundering in the United States in the 1990s. Uh, he has since been in business with some of Putin's favorite oligarchs back home in Russia. Oh, and there was also the son of the Russian billionaire who arranged the Trump Tower meeting um, and who spoke about it multiple times with Don Jr. Uh, then there was also the director of a Russian university who invited Trump campaign foreign policy advisor Carter Page to speak in Moscow. And then all the folks who Carter Page spoke with during his trip, a Russian deputy prime minister, a top official at Russia's state oil company, and according to one report that Carter Page denies, actually the head of that Russian state oil company, who is one of Vladimir Putin's top lieutenants. Uh, then there was also the Kremlin-linked pseudo-academic, who seems to have cultivated Trump campaign foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos, uh, telling Papadopoulos that the Russians uh, had dirt on Hillary Clinton. He introduced Papadopoulos to a guy with connections at the Russian foreign ministry, who wanted to set up a meeting between Trump and Putin. Papadopoulos also met with a Russian woman who was introduced to him as Vladimir Putin's niece, something he very excitedly emailed his superiors about at the Trump campaign. Vladimir Putin doesn't have a niece, but if you're trying to keep track of uh, what's going on in the Mueller investigation, say, what we have learned from investigative journalism and the congressional investigations in terms of the Trump campaign's links to Russia, I mean, just try looking at it in terms of the sheer number of Russians and people linked to the Russian government who made contact with the Trump campaign and the Trump transition. I mean, that's a lot of different Russians. But all of those folks have had to make room for one more today. Back in April, the Washington Post reported that just before the inauguration, Eric Pr
Prince, major Trump donor, founder of the controversial private security firm Blackwater, uh, and the brother of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, Eric Prince, went to the Seychelles Islands for a meeting with a Russian, uh, with, with a representative of Vladimir Putin's office. Eric Prince reportedly presented himself as an unofficial envoy for President-elect Trump at that meeting. The purpose of that meeting was reportedly to set up a secret back-channel communication between the Trump camp and the Putin camp. Since that meeting was reported, Eric Prince has said, yeah, okay, I went to the Seychelles and met some Russian guy. I think he was maybe a fund manager, but we just had a beer. He said he doesn't even remember the guy's name. They didn't talk about anything important. And whatever they did talk about, it definitely had nothing to do with Donald Trump, and besides, he can't remember it. He can't remember anyway. Uh, well, today we have found out who that Russian guy was that Eric Prince so unmemorably shared a beer with in the Seychelles uh, a few days before Donald Trump's inauguration. This comes to us today from The Intercept, which reports that uh, according to flight records they obtained, on the date that this meeting with Eric Prince apparently occurred, a private plane flew a man named Kirill Dmitriev to the Seychelles Islands. Kirill Dmitriev is the CEO of the Russian Direct Investment Fund which is a $10 billion sovereign wealth fund that is created by and run by the Russian government. Eric Prince's company confirmed to The Intercept that Prince and Dmitriev crossed paths in the Seychelles, which means that today, one more Russian gets added to this roster of contacts. So we've got Russian ambassador, Russian banker, Russian ex-con, Russian real estate guy, Russian military intelligence guy, Russian oligarch, another Russian banker, Russian lawyer, Russian lobbyist, Russian money laundering suspect, Russian billionaire son, Russian connected academic, Russian deputy prime minister, Russian oil executive, Russian foreign ministry official, Russian president's fake niece, and now new guy, head of Russia's sovereign wealth fund. <laughs> it, I mean, that's too big for a band. That's too big for a marching band in most towns. I mean, but, there, but there's, there's one more thing to say about the Russian Sovereign Wealth Fund who met with Eric Prince during the transition. The Russian Direct Investment Fund, that fund he runs, is one of many Russian government institutions that is under U.S. sanctions since Russia invaded Crimea in 2014, which means that no American business person, even Eric Prince, should be doing business with that fund. Eric Prince's explanation about that meeting in the Seychelles has been that it had nothing to do with the Trump transition. It was just business. Well, it can't have been business with that guy from the Russian Sovereign Wealth Fund. At least, it can't have been business if it was legal business. Eric Prince scheduled to testify before the House Intelligence Committee uh, the day after tomorrow, so maybe that will come up. Meanwhile, though, more than a year after our presidential election, more than a, like a year and a half since the FBI started its counterintelligence investigation into the links between Russia and the Trump campaign, how is it possible that even today we are still adding to the list of Russian government figures who got themselves involved with the Trump campaign in the transition? Still, we're still learning about more of them. How many more can there be? Why should your business build a modern